Good morning, everyone. It was way back, eight years back. I was in a program, and there was a girl sitting in the front row. So she was a very sincere girl. She used to keep taking notes. Every time I crack a joke, she will write down the joke and then only laugh. You know, like these sincere girls. So the lunch break came, and all of a lot of people were crowded around that girl. So I went running to her. I pushed everyone up, and I asked her to stand up. She stood up. Her hands were twisted, her legs were twisted, and she started to walk like this. This girl had cerebral palsy with progressive muscular uh, paralysis, starting from the age of six. At the age of eleven, her father left the family. At the age of fourteen, she had a very bad incident with one of her relatives. At the age of eighteen, she attempted suicide for the first time. At the age of twenty-three, she was attending a program. The day we did our program, the next day, this girl came up to the stage and she said, "Doctor, something profound happened to me yesterday." I asked her what. I went to my house. I looked straight into the mirror. I looked straight into my eyes, and for the first time in my life, I said, "I love you to myself, doctor." She said. All my life. I used to hate the person I see in the mirror because I believe because of her I suffered. Today I realized my physical dis disability was nothing as compared to my mental disability. I choose to give it up, doctor. She said. I asked, how do you want to give it up? She said, I want to dance on stage. I asked, why do you want to dance on stage? Every time I want to do something in life, people used to say I'm disabled and put me on a wheelchair. Today, for the first time in my life, I want to feel I am also a normal child. She said. She came up to the stage, and for 45 minutes, non-stop, this girl danced to the song "Lungi Dance." Every one of us who was in the audience that day, we literally felt if there was a god in this world, the god came down and danced on that girl's body and went. She finished her MCA with a gold medal. Today she works for EMC Squared Company as a head HR in Bangalore today. How do I tell you the story? Most of us want to inspire ourselves. Most of us want to inspire others. Is there a science to how you inspire people? Studying this topic very deeply, I came up with five ways. in which i found there is a pattern in which you can spread inspiration the first one is what we call as words so what are words i always say there are two kinds of words the one that comes out of your mouth and the one that you talk in your mind about what comes out of the mouth and when these two words match that's where a synchrony starts to happen i'll give you an example Isaac Newton sat under the apple tree and he saw the apple fall down. He asked for himself, "Why is it not going up?" Second, he asked for himself, "Why is it not going on the other side?" That changed the way Isaac Newton saw that. If I was sitting under the apple tree, what do you think I would have done? I'd have ran and gone and picked that apple. I'd have eaten it and then I'd ask, "Next apple, when will it come down?" That's the difference between Isaac Newton and me. It's not what happened to you that makes a difference. It's what you say in your head about what happens to you that actually makes a difference. And the most profound difference is the words you tell to yourself has a profound impact on the words that come out of your mouth. The second thing I always say in life is purpose. Do you have a purpose on why you want to do? It may sound cliche what a purpose is, but I always say knowing where you want to go. why you want to go and how passionate you are to actually get that have to sink in together imagine and see if so many of us go through day to day life do we actually ask ourselves this one question why do i do what do i do is this burning enough for me to go out there and change the world is it something i can do to make an impact in someone's lives when that is very strong it's literally like a universe that conspires to get that out of your life I have the right words in my brain. I have a true purpose of what I want. And what's the third? It's called engagement. You may have a great purpose in life, but if you're not engaged with that purpose and you're not acting according to the purpose, 
you literally have no way to do it. I'll give you a classic example. There was this boy when we studied in school. His father, mother were from a very middle class family. They used to bring every day, his, he was very passionate about music. He used to bring every day music instruments and you know give it to her and uh, give it to him and make him play. And he used to try and he had a little bit of a talent but the kind of dedication for the purpose that that boy had and the kind of engagement his parents gave him and gave their environment to one extent where the mother even had to pledge her thali chain to actually get him a, the better form of a keyboard. That boy is none other than a famous music director called Iman today. Why do I say that? It's not just the purpose. Unless you have engaged with that purpose and your core is engaged with that purpose, there is no way that purpose would actually come out. I always say this having worked with so many kids. When a child comes and tells me, I want to become this in life, that's the purpose. I ask three other questions and I can exactly tell you whether the child would actually not will become or not become because the way the child is engaged, you will know exactly whether the child will become. The fourth way that you could inspire yourself and others is the sense of belonging. What is a sense of belonging? We always say this statement in our schools, birds of the same feather flock together. It's the same way. The thoughts you have and the way you actually engage with yourself brings in a kind of belonging. I, I know a child, an influencer, she came up and told me, I have 100,000 people on Instagram, but not a single person to share my problem with. It's a phase that we always put, with artificial intelligence coming in, machine learning coming in, it's more of people living in an artificial world than living in the real world. A person came up and told me this very beautifully. In the, in the metaverse world, I'm so affectionate to my wife, but in the real world, we are like cat and dog. The world starts to develop and there the brain starts to blur between the reality and the artificiality. And I always say, nothing as much as having a deep connected conversation with someone. Nothing as profound as being with someone you love. Nothing as as simple as feeling the sense of belonging for who you are and what you are inside of your community. I always say this, a sense of belonging to who you are deep inside very important in every aspect of you that, that you do in your life. I tell you this with a very lovely example of a child. I was walking in one of the schools that we work with and this boy came running up to me. I asked him, what happened? He said, uh, I don't know, I feel sad. I asked him, why do you feel sad? I feel nobody loves me. I asked him, why do you feel that dear nobody loves me? Because my mother keeps criticizing about me. My father keeps again criticizing and telling me to do this, do that. My teachers also crit criticizing me. My friends also are now started bullying me. Who do I have in this world, doctor? Why should I live in this world? It's very profound that you need to understand a sense of belonging that actually develops. A classic example is the case of Robin Williams. A person who was one of the legendary comedians in the world, but had a vacuum of lack of belongingness. And we know what uh, what happened after that. The last and the final thing, five, is what I would say is balancing of mind, body, heart and spirit. You may be the greatest human being on planet earth in whatever you do, but if you don't strike a balance, for you need to know when you leave this planet, nothing you take back from this world except great memories. And these memories come from profoundly from families, from deep connected relationships you have and wonderful people you actually connect with in your life. I give this example to one of the students of mine. This girl was six months old child when she had a very, very tragic event that happened in her life. Her father and mother were having a huge conflict. The father went home, picked up an acid bottle and threw it on the mother's face. The acid that fell on the mother's face splashed and fell on this little child and the entire left side of the child was burnt. The father was in jail, the mother died in on the spot because of the enormous amount of burns that she had. This child became an orphan. An NGO adopted this girl, did plastic surgery for her, put her in school. At the age of 18, she finished her 12. At the age of 21, she finishes her BCom. At the age of 23, she has finished her MBA. Today, at the age of 31, she works for a renowned company in Mumbai and runs an NGO for rehabilitation of acid attack victims in the world today. I asked her, you don't have a mother, father. How come you're so happy? 
How come you're so profound? How come you're so inspirational? You have every reason to sit there and sulk. You have every reason to sit there and cry that I don't want to do something in my life. How is it that you're being so cheerful? And she said something very profound. She said, Doctor, to be happy, you don't need anybody. You need a heart that sees happiness in everybody. And if you have that heart to see happiness in everybody, every moment can be happy in your life. And that's where I would end this uh, talk with a lovely incident that happened in my life that changed my life completely. Last year, October, that we were working with the Indian Army in Jammu. So Jammu, the area called Kunj Valley, where we were working with to rehabilitate drug abused children. So we were on a plane where we were going in an area where it was completely infested by terrorists. So we had a lot of armed men who were protecting us. There was this one soldier who was my body double. Now a body double is someone who fully stands by you. Anything happens to you, the body double takes it over. So this person was standing with a loaded gun, an AK-47 gun and was sitting. And I was getting heart attack because every time there was a bump, the gun used to go up and down. And if he pulls the trigger, my head is gone. So I was also very, you know, my heart was beating very, very fast while I was with him. And I asked him, what time did you wake up in the morning? He said, 3.30 in the morning. I said, 3.30? What are you doing from 3.30? He said, I woke up at 3.30, sir, to put on the gear, the bulletproof gear. It's 18 kgs, the gear. Then to dress on himself up, the gun was around 12 kgs. So he was literally carrying 30 kgs on his body. Then he has to travel one and a half hours from his basin to the basin that I was there. And then the whole day he works protecting me and then in the night he goes back to his sleep. I asked him, why do you have a loaded gun all the time pointing at my face? He said something very profound. Sir, you have been given protection and if there is a terrorist or an attack that comes on your vehicle, there is a sniper out there who will try to take him. Before the split second the sniper takes, I will take my gun and shoot him. The difference between me and that person, if both of us misses and the suicide bomber or gunman come in front of the vehicle and tries to pull a trigger, I jump in front and I hug you and I take all the bullets on my body. And I asked, you're not my mother, you're not my brother, you're not my sister. I have not paid you any money and I don't even know your family. How am I even going to compensate for you laying down your life to me? And he said something very profound. I don't know, you're not my mother, father, brother or sister, but you have one thing in you, doctor. You are an Indian and that's more than enough for me to protect you. <laughs> Sometimes inspiration may not always come from a big crucible event. Sometimes inspiration may not always come from just financial goals. Sometimes inspiration will not always come from fame or fortune or anything. It always comes up from a core purpose, well worded, something that engages your heart, a place where you feel belong and also a place where you have your mind, body, heart and spirit united together. Thank you all.